This is a car that I never thought would exist, but it does show that Porsche is really starting to take an interest and invest in cars outside of the 911 because this is based on the 911's mid-engined younger brother. But before I get into what this car really is, I wanna to touch briefly on the 911 itself. The 911 is Porsche's baby. It's the kid that the parents obviously love more than all of the rest and they put all of their time and energy into it. That's why you end up with things like the GT3, the GT3 RS, the GT2 RS, even the GT1. All of these different variants to make sure that the entire world knows how special the 911 is to Porsche. It's really their flagship sports car. There have been different trims of different models, but never to the degree of really making a GT car outside of the 911 lineup. That was until, of course, 2016, when they came out with the GT4, and that was based on the 981 generation of the Cayman. That was a really big deal, because up until that point, there had never been a GT car that wasn't a 911, at least not that I was aware of. And for six years, from 2016 until today, when I filmed this video in 2023, the GT4 was all we got, until now. Because now we have this, it's a 2023 Porsche Cayman GT4 RS. Now I love the Cayman platform, the Cayman, the Boxster, obviously for those of you who have watched other videos on my channel, you know that I have a 987.2 Boxster. So I'm very heavily invested in Porsche's mid-engine platform, which makes this car very exciting for me personally. So in today's video, we'll talk through the specs. I'll take you around the exterior design. There's quite a lot going on on this car with louvers and vents and carbon fiber everywhere. So I'm pretty excited to talk about that. We'll go through the interior. I won't be taking this out for a drive today, but I will be finding out which of the car cave crates it fits into. I'll start by talking about the specs, and first off, let's talk about the engine. It's derived from the 911 GT3R and the 911 RSR. It's a four liter naturally aspirated flat six, but in this it produces 493 brake horsepower, 331 pound-feet of torque. That's a little bit less than you get in a 911 GT3, but you have to understand the GT3 being a 911 is rear-engined, this is mid-engined. So the four liter had to be taken and moved around a little bit, oriented in some different ways to fit into this car, and that meant that the exhaust was made a little bit longer, so there's a bit of a power loss. That's all fine though, it does come with exclusively the seven-speed PDK system, no manual on the GT4 RS, but it's the same story with the GT3 RS, so that really shouldn't come as a surprise. It drives the rear wheels only and does zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. That's the same time that you could expect from the 911 GT3. Top speed wise, this does 196 miles an hour. The GT3 gets an extra scoop of ice cream at 197 miles per hour. But this really is a track car. So all of those facts and figures, they're great. But as you can tell, just from the look of this car, it's made for the racetrack. And when they did lap this around the Nürburgring, it did a time of seven minutes, 9.3 seconds, which makes it faster than the previous generation of the 911 GT3, the 991.2 gen, but still quite a bit slower than the current gen, the 992. Track performance is about more than just power. It's about aerodynamics. And I'm pleased to say that the GT4 RS has some pretty substantial aerodynamic design going on. Right around the front, you'll notice this larger front splitter compared to the standard GT4. That's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna improve airflow over the entire body of the car, and it's gonna give you some better downforce. So as the air flows through here, comes out of these slots on the top of the front bumper and make sure that it goes nice and smooth over the body of the car. You'll notice on both sides of the car, there are these little fins with slots inside of them. Again, that's to help with the air to flow along the sides of the car, directing it right into those massive air intakes. And these little slots here, as the air does pass through, it's gonna push down on those fins and it's gonna give you better grip on either side of the car. This one has the Visac package, so it has this beautiful exposed carbon hood. That's obviously a lightweight option, but it has these ducts and they direct air through a series of channels, surprisingly, to cool the brakes, even though they're up here on top. So on each of the fenders, there are these louvers. If you've ever seen some of those old racing cars that come over a crest and just somersault and launch into the air. That's because of a buildup of pressure on the underside of the car. They go over the crest, that pressure becomes a bit too much and sends the car airborne. This is to relieve that pressure so that you don't have that kind of an issue. And by relieving that pressure and reducing lift, it also helps to suck the car down and give you some more grip. 
As we move along the side profile of the car, you start noticing some little subtle lines, but if you pay closer attention to them, you start to really understand how functional they are. Take, for example, this little cutout in the side fenders, not unlike the one that you'll see on the new GT3 RS. If you follow that line, you'll start to see how it really channels air into this side intake to provide crucial cooling to the engine. There's a bit of carbon fiber on the mirror and this little triangle, the air duct is carbon fiber as well. And there are no side windows on the GT4 RS. Instead, you have an additional air duct. On the standard car, it's black plastic, but this Visac package, it's carbon fiber and you also have a little hexagonal grid on there as well. Notice the wheels, they're an optional extra and they're actually made of magnesium for some added weight savings but they're only an option to you with the Wysak package. Without the Wysak package, you can't even get these wheels. And you also notice that this car is specced out with the carbon ceramics. I don't know if those come as standard, but this car does have them. Around the back, you see the really radical aerodynamics. And of course, I'm talking about this huge spoiler. You'll recognize the swan neck design from the 992 gen of the GT3. It produces an insane amount of downforce over the rear axle of this car. And again, YSAC package, this has a titanium sport exhaust where standard cars have a stainless steel one. All of this means that the GT4 RS is 35 kilograms lighter than the GT4 and produces 25% more downforce. Now on the interior of the RS, it's gonna feel very familiar to anybody that's been in a 718 with some notable differences. Everything is covered in this beautiful race tech material. You've got the dashboard, the covers around the center console, you've got the door panels, even the glove box. It's all in this really nice material. There's plenty of matte carbon fiber sprinkled throughout the car as well. The seats are all carbon fiber buckets. I believe you can option out the comfort seats as well, but uh, this car has the carbon buckets. And they're, they're not bad, they're pretty comfortable. I can imagine that they're fantastic on a track but they might not be the most comfortable on a long journey, for example. Steering wheel, it's a GT steering wheel. I believe that comes as standard as well, just like on the GT4, and it's covered in this nice race tech and comes standard with a little marker as well. GT4 RS badge on the speedometer. And as I said, these come exclusively with the seven speed PDK, but they've changed the gear selector to kind of remind you of a manual gear selector. It feels really nice to the touch and gives you that tactile feedback. Of course, you have the paddle shifters as well. Sport Chrono package is an optional extra on this car. I felt like that was kind of weird. It's a GT4 RS, I feel like it should come as standard. One really interesting thing is that they've actually moved the air box into the cabin. So if you look behind you, you see all of the channels coming from those ducts that I mentioned earlier where the rear windows used to be. And it's just channeling air into the engine. It's really cool and it's all carbon fiber on this car. So it's a nice thing to look back and see. And again, YSAC package, so it says YSAC RS up on the headrests, which is a nice little detail. This being an RS, a more lightweight Porsche, it doesn't have door handles because those are just way too heavy, so it has these nice little fabric door pulls. On the subject of price, the base MSRP for the GT4 RS is around $149,000. And it being an RS, it's gonna be pretty hard to find one right around MSRP. It's probably gonna be a markup. And again, that's without options. So if you want the Visac package, the magnesium wheels, all of that kind of stuff, that's all gonna cost more. And that kind of segues me into the car cave crates, whether or not I feel like this car is collectible. I would say so. As I said, it's the first RS that's not on the 911 platform. And that's a big deal for Porsche from a history perspective. It's a big deal for the mid-engine platform in the Porsche family. I should mention that these are not gonna be limited production by any means. They're not gonna be numbered cars. It's not like Porsche came out and said, we're only gonna make a thousand of them. But they did say they're gonna limit how many that they make. So they're not gonna be nearly as common as some of the other trims that you can get for the Cayman. All of that considered, getting the first of anything from Porsche, I think is a pretty safe place to put your money. So for that reason, I would say yes, it's collectible. Daily drivability, me personally, I probably wouldn't drive it on a daily basis. It's more of a weekend car, uh, in my opinion. And as far as tracking it and or avoiding it, this car is really for the track. So if you are gonna buy one of these, I feel like you should track it. It's a very expensive car, and as I said, it is a bit collectible, so I can understand that a lot of people are gonna buy this and they're gonna leave them in the garage. That's a bit sad. I feel like if you're not gonna track this car, you might as well avoid it. But again, 
That's just my opinion. So track it if you're gonna get it. If you're not gonna track it, probably avoid it. But that's all I have for this video. I wanna say a huge thank you to Porsche of Ontario for loaning me this car. This car is actually for sale right now, so reach out to them if you're interested. I will leave links in the description below to their website and their social media for you to go ahead and check them out. Otherwise, leave me a comment below with your thoughts on the GT4 RS. Let us know if you've ordered one, maybe share your spec, that'd be a pretty cool thing for people to be able to read. Leave me a like and subscribe if you can, and I'll see you in the next one.